mid 2012, I saw like this massive uh, gap that exists between military drones and consumer drones, like people building toys and people making drones to kill people. Um, so I felt that that gap could be uh, filled in. And back then, I was um, taking some classes at Stanford, so I managed to like, uh, so I, uh, I went up to Napa Valley. I used to go up there quite a bit. And uh, um, I, in Napa Valley, uh, there were a lot of farmers who were willing to pay a lot of money to have um, aerial images of their farms be taken so that they can predict uh, where you know, the wheat is, where uh, you know, fertilizers need to be added, where pesticides need to be added. And it's kind of like uh, what they call as precision agriculture, and it's already a multi-billion dollar industry. And so that's kind of how I got started with drones, making money, basically uh, flying drones for farmers, um, capturing the data, uploading it online, um, and getting paid. In Silicon Valley, I just uh, you know, ask people for help. And the great thing about Silicon Valley is the more you people ask people for help, the more people will openly reach out to you and try to mentor you if your requests are sincere in nature. So uh, I, just have, I just happen to have like, some of the greatest um, entrepreneurs and uh, people I really respect mentoring me and guiding me and helping me make not a lot of mistakes uh, that I could have probably made. And we're fo focusing more and more on software. So software is exponentially scalable. Uh, just the way the drone perceives the world, the AI behind it can be applied to a whole bunch of other sensors out there. And that is where um, you know, we're creating almost human-like sentience in terms of how different sensors can perceive the world. So you can pretty much say that the AI that we're building is an absolute replacement for a human looking at a footage and making decisions. So, so are you really happy? How many could answer this fairly and surely? Why we are miserable in most senses, you know, because we have stopped living the life that we were truly born to live. And we are now only focused on one little thing, which is monetary success. We've forgotten success doesn't only belong to those who have money. So it's beyond that. When I was 19, I made two and a half million US dollars. This is in 1991. In those days, two and a half million US dollars was a lot of money. Maybe in today's world, seems like a small sum. Uh, two and a half million in those days would seem like 10 million US today. And honest truth is, it did not take me much effort. Um, in a year's time, by imitating what my father was doing, I followed his model, started manufacturing garments in China, sold it to the same clients that he had, at a larger profit than my father was making. I made two and a half million US dollars in one year. And somehow my ego got boosted. And I told my father, why have you been wasting so much time I could do that in one year. What took you maybe time to build up, you know, two and a half million takes a couple of years for him to make. Uh, Steve McKnight is one of Australia's most successful property uh, uh, writers, but he also has these groups of investors. He is currently holding 300 million in assets of multiple investors. And uh, I got to spend some time with him. And, help him through his issues because he thought also uh, accumulation of wealth was the only way to find that uh, nirvana of happiness. And, and he realized that it was not true. 